down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana born drug smuggler Barry Seal still relevant today. The revelations surrounding Seal's involvement with the vice presidency of George H. Bush, the Arkansas governorship of Bill Clinton, secret money laundering dealings with the DEA, and CIA director William J. Casey's shadow government of the United States paints a clear picture of the evolution of the current corruption that infests the highest levels of government today. In a staff meeting in 1981 with newly elected President Ronald Reagan, CIA Director William Casey said, We'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. In the mid-1980s, News Channel 8 reporter Teresa Dickey stumbled onto what would become a goldmine of investigative journalism when she innocently went to report on what appeared to be Governor Bill Clinton's new initiative to bring good jobs to the people of Arkansas. To her surprise, Teresa Dickey gradually uncovered a massive shadow government operation replete with illegal cargo plane modifications for drug running and money laundering that would have huge ties to the DEA. And at the center of that deliberate and illegal operation was Barry Seal, a fearless drug smuggler and gun runner for the DEA and the CIA. Seal had been busted for drug smuggling and worked out a deal with the DEA to act as an informant. But last night in Louisiana, Barry Seal's enemies caught up with him and killed him. Tonight, three men are in custody. NBC's Brian Ross reports that Seal was about to testify for the government once again. It was Seal who posed as a smuggler and flew into Nicaragua and took these pictures showing Columbus and Sandinista officials loading cocaine on his plane. I came to the table with uh, a background in Air Force intelligence, uh, eight years during the Vietnam War, worked with the CIA uh, and Air America, and then that led me into work, uh, contract work with the CIA in an obscure place called Mena, Arkansas, uh, back when Bill Clinton was governor and back when George Bush was the president. And, uh, and I personally witnessed a complicity between these two, these two men, Bush and Clinton, in terms of uh, transporting cocaine into the U.S. Uh, for the purpose of sale to generate money to fight a war. And that, that war at the time was the uh, conflict in Central America involving the Sandinistas uh, in Nicaragua. And after the Iran-Contra hearings detailed Oliver North's diversion of funds to the Contras and all of the failed indictments never brought anyone to justice, to this day the banks continue to launder the billion-dollar drug cartel industry's money. And when they are caught, they pay a fine and no one goes to prison. Thank you, Clinton and Bush crime family. Corruption has been largely normalized. Although all of this evidence may seem irrelevant as the statute of limitations has been surpassed, what does it mean to the upcoming election? What difference at this point does it make? It means everything. It means innocent people mysteriously died in Arkansas for no reason. Because of Linda Ives' investigation into the death of her son, she was placed on Bill Clinton's enemy list by White House counsel Mark Fabian. Already, people associated with the case were beginning to die in what amounted to a reign of terror among young people in Alexander, Arkansas. The crime syndicate operating within the Bush and Clinton families will either be stopped dead in its tracks from entering the executive office once again, or a Hillary presidency will usher in a new age of corruption that will bring the United States to its knees. John Bound for Infowars.com. And ladies and gentlemen, we are live on the 25th day of September 2016. We have a gigantor transmission lined up for you today. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and we'll be back after this quick break, so get locked and loaded. We are less than 24 hours out right now uh, to the kickoff of the big debate. I mean, it's technically like 26 hours, 27 hours, but uh, for all intents and purposes, it is game time. Stay with us. We're going to be live here for the next two hours as we are every Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. I'm Alex Jones, your host. In the final countdown of this historic election, and that is calling it lightly, calling it historical, this unprecedentedly important election, I was up here yesterday working 
for about eight hours with Rob Dew, our news director, who put in 14 hours yesterday on Saturday, and he's up here right now working. And the reason we're working so hard, and the reason I can't drag Kit Daniels away, who's been working seven days a week, writing for InfoWars.com, who's in the room next to me right now, uh, is because history is happening, and anybody who's even half dialed in understands that everything we do right now echoes through history. Again, thank you so much for joining us uh, on this Sunday transmission. We are going to be here for the next two hours, and I'm going to be back tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. with the four-hour weekday transmission. Then I will return with the rest of our crew from 7 Central until... 11 central or so or midnight eastern with four plus hours of live coverage of this historic 90 minute debate to take place at a university in new york now they're also putting this uh, out it's being hosted by uh, nbc's lester holt but it's being put out on a lot of platforms we've subscribed to the feed so i'm not going to be talking over the feed normally when i talk over the feed it's for fair use so that i can analyze it uh, and, and 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 be able to analyze corporate media feeds corporate spin uh, you know, these different reporters that try to score brownie points and engage in dirty tricks. I'll only be commenting during brief applauses uh, or, or during brief uh, breaks. We'll have an hour of live analysis before 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock it kicks off. At 9.30 when it ends, we'll have analysis of the debate, uh, all the clips. I'm going to have the full crew up here grabbing clips. They'll all be ready with highlights, uh, analysis, Leanne, McAdoo, uh, David at night, uh, Rob Dew. Uh, Mr. Schroyer and so many others that are part of the team. We will be here breaking it down live with our writers, our reporters, our crew. Also, radio affiliates out there that want to pick up uh, my weekday show. We're on the radio satellite at night, obviously, with the TV show. I never thought the TV show would get picked up by almost more uh, stations uh, than my radio show, but you're welcome to pick that up as well, and also welcome to pick up the two hours of analysis uh, afterwards. Uh, so a lot happening. We also have some UHF, VHF, and cable stations picking up the transmission, which, which shows how the new independent media is growing. The old dinosaur media is dying. A very historic time to be alive. Okay, where to begin? Donald Trump showing what presidential material he is uh, yesterday when Mark Cuban came out uh, and said, I'm going to be trolling you in the first row. I'm a guest of Hitlery. Um, Trump said, well, that's fine. I'm going to bring Jennifer Flowers, who you settled a sex case with and who you admitted uh, that you basically did things to and abuse. And Jennifer Flowers said, you bet, with a little kissy mark, a little emoji back at Trump, that she will be there tomorrow night. Now Paula Jones and Kathleen Willey and others, we've interviewed all these women uh, over the last 20 plus years, they're all going to be there now in the front row. So see how Mark Cuban and others like it. See, they strike out at Trump and the populist. Trump doesn't lay there like a rhino or a neocon. He strikes back against the empire. So very, very exciting. But listen, here's the big issue. Do you really think that... Hillary can show up when she can't even stand up for more than 10 or 15 minutes. She's canceled all of her live events in the last week, only does brief Skype or satellite interviews and looks like she's on drugs and uh, behaves bizarrely and her eyes are pointing different directions. And, and by the way, when I first started hearing this a week ago, I thought it was the listeners who sometimes, just like I used to, I've gotten a little jaded over the years, less conspiratorial, uh, though most of the time we're right. They were saying it's a blue screen with her with a big plane behind her. Uh, you know, it says strong together or together strong. And it's it's fake. It's, it, it's blue screen. But then I noticed day after day, press conference after press conference, it's the same shot, a different outfit with the same lighting. And you can tell it's blue screen. She is blue screening. Because I went and looked at her record. She's admittedly not flying around the country on top of it, but keeps popping up with daily, not really news briefings, but just news statements uh, to the press. So. It's getting crazier and crazier and crazier. So all of that uh, is coming up today. We've got a big stack of polls showing Trump continuing to surge across the nation. That's why the Justice Department, run by the U.N. publicly with the Strong Cities Initiative, says they're openly going to come in and try to federalize this election. Uh, you know, the Soros gave hundreds of millions more the last month. Ford Foundation, 100 plus million. Billions total the last few years to race baiting uh, communist organizations like BLM to cause destabilization in the country. 
and everyone is seeing through it, ladies and gentlemen, but they are really doubling down, and clearly, their October surprise is, is, is a multifaceted attack pattern. Racial division, seize on questionable police shootings and make them the number one issue. Uh, also, start wars with Russia. Actions against Russia have massively intensified in Ukraine. We have the top U.S. general in a clip coming up after the break. This is amazing. No-fly zone would require war with Syria and Russia, top U.S. general says, General Dunford. But he goes on to follow the orders of Obama in a longer clip we have and say, we should implement a no-fly fly zone against Russia, but not against, quote, U.S. And the Russians have come out in detail that Obama and Hillary have been aiding ISIS and Al-Qaeda. The Al-Nusra Front, as it's known, is Al-Qaeda slash ISIS in Syria. And Russia is asking that be declassified by the U.S. Congress. They say they've seen the documents that even Congress knows that they are running ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Cy Hirsch has come out, you name it. Uh, but this is massive. No-fly zone would require war with Syria and Russia. Top U.S. general. We have the video clip. It's on Infowars.com. That is going to be coming up. So economic collapse. Uh, escalated theater level war, maybe worse with Russia. Escalated crises in Ukraine. Uh, economic collapse. Uh, as I mentioned, race war they're trying to start. This is the incredible level that we have reached, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, we have George W. Bush hugging Michelle and Obama. You know, they vacation with the Clintons at the opening of a, quote, museum. I mean, this is so transparent that the elite are basically two, two wings on the same bird, uh, same bird of prey. Michelle Obama gives George W. Bush a big hug. Nation goes wild. It's okay that Obama continues minimum sentencing for black people, that the Bushes continued it, and, the, and, and that the Clintons created it. It's okay, because it's all about just hugging and kissing and saying you love us, then it's okay if you actually target us. By the way, there was that mall shooting uh, on Friday, and I didn't know what happened. And some people were saying, I saw in the comments of Infowars.com, why aren't you seizing on this? Because it's not a Muslim? And I'm like, listen, I'm the person that was against invading Iraq and all these countries and destabilizing the Middle East and putting radical Islam in charge. I'm not some Islamophobe. I'm against... Wahhabism out of Saudi Arabia that is now the dominant form of Islam. But I was waiting and seeing what happened because no one had any information. The guy shot four women and one man. Well, now we know. Burlington shooter ID'd as Archon Sitton, immigrant from Turkey, not a citizen, but a legal permanent resident of the United States. That's from Breitbart.com. It's also on Infowars.com. Here's another one, CBS Seattle, gunman on run after killing five at Macy's, now confirmed to be a Muslim from Turkey. Turkish immigrant, Washington Mall shooting suspect 20 is arrested 30 miles from crime scene in a zombie-like state as police refuse to rule out terrorism. So, we, I didn't come out on Friday and say, hey, I bet it's a Muslim. But I noticed the Muslim groups and others attack me saying, oh, we're not covered because it wasn't a Muslim. About 90% of the time there's a mass shooting now in this country, it's a Muslim or a bombing. And then Hillary comes out and tries to cover it up. The point is you're bringing people in from countries where they can't even get along with each other, much less us. And then we get George Soros' own emails a month ago from D.C. leaks, and they're admitting right there that he wants to destabilize things and, and, and cause a collapse of civilization and then have people so concerned about all the terrorism that we then capitulate to a central leftist government police state. Hitler did the same thing, firebombing his own government building on February 27th, 1933. He went from being an elected El Presidente to becoming the chancellor and the president. That's known as the Fuhrer or the leader. Ladies and gentlemen, all this and a lot more straight ahead. MSNBC is pushing the narrative that police may have planted a gun at Keith Lamont Scott shooting. We've got our reporters there on the ground in North Carolina. Stay with us on Alex Jones. Coming up, Joe Biggs noticed this on the official Fox News website, then I found it in other places. Fox News lies, says white cop killed Keith Lamont Scott in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I kept hearing, you know, these white people killed this guy. It was a black cop. And now the media is claiming the police planted a gun. Talk about conspiracy theorists. They have no proof. They have four cops saying drop the gun. They have video of the guy with the gun in his hand. But they're saying that is staged. But then when 
Reuters adds 15% more Democrats to national polling for three months and admits that they're doing that, that's not a conspiracy. When they claim Hillary's in a dead heat, when they add 15% more Democrats to the demographic that they actually questioned. I mean, it's just next level BS. But let's get to this really, really serious issue. For those that don't remember, about a week and a half ago, there was a big bombing that killed 80 Syrian regular military troops who were battling al Nusra in a key city. And al Nusra is the name of al-Qaeda, or the Wahhabia slash ISIS. Al-Qaeda means base. Uh, IS means Islamic base, Islamic state. It's the same group out of Saudi Arabia. That's who funds it. That's indisputed, by the way. The media thinks you're stupid and tries to confuse it. Now, that's their entire program. And so they've got all this unfolding, and, and then you've got the Syrian military winning all over the country. And the Russians, 90% pulled out for the last few years, but they've left some, some forward observers, some people there to identify targets, and some aircraft, and advisors to the Syrians. And so every time they're about to defeat al-Qaeda or ISIS, the U.S. planes or NATO planes accidentally bomb the forces, and sometimes they bomb Russians. Uh, last week it was the... Uh, it was the Syrians, Syrian military. And so now we have the headlines. Russia says U.S. failing to deliver on Syrian ceasefire once the tale's classified. That's from RT. Here's another report from Breitbart. This is all up on Infowars.com. Hillary Clinton-sponsored Secret of Arab Spring program that destabilized the Middle East. Tomorrow, we're going to break a major report. Paul Watson is with eyewitnesses, documents, you name it, that add to what is admitted. Gaddafi was trying to surrender for over a year. He didn't start the war. They wanted to wreck the country and hand it over to ISIS and al-Qaeda. That's why they did this. Because Hillary came, she saw, and, uh, you know, Gaddafi died. Hillary Clinton sponsored Secret of Arab Spring program that he stabilized the Middle East. I'm giving you credit for inspiring the peaceful protests with regard to Egypt with quotation marks around the word peaceful. Now, remember uh, CNN with... But they're different hosts, like Anderson Cooper, how great all this was. Turning loose Sunni, Wahhabist, Al-Qaeda all over the region. Here's another article. Um, West still arming Al-Nazar in Syria's peace, almost impossible. Russia's UN envoy. We have the video clips of all of this. Russia says U.S. failing to deliver on Syrian cease fire. Here's another one. West still arming Al-Nazar in Syria, peace, almost impossible. On and on and on. Now... Let's go to a chilling clip here. And the full clips, again, on Infowars.com, it's like 30 minutes long of testimony. No fly zone will require war with Syria and Russia. Top U.S. General, General Dunford, says the U.S. to control all the airspace in Syria would require going to war against Syria and Russia. Because Syria is a sovereign nation invaded, basically, by Saudi Arabia with Wahhabists. They're mainly Shiite, Christian, and Alawite. They're minority groups. They're being invaded. They're peaceful. Then our government says we've got to invade Syria because al-Qaeda and ISIS is there. Our criminal government is the one that financed them. The refugees they bring out of Syria are the Wahhabist, al-Qaeda, ISIS people that get their butts kicked. So they evacuate to the U.S. and Europe. Then they attack us. General Dunford says that the U.S., to control all the airspace in Syria would require going to war against Syria and Russia. This is his response to the latest proposal by John Kerry, which involves grounding only Syrian and Russian airplanes, and that means shooting them down if they try to take off, even fly back to their country, speaking of the Russians. So that's the two minutes to midnight we've now come to. And the top Syrian general came out last week and said, we're already seeing World War III. It's biblical. It's starting in Syria. It's happening right now. And they go on and add, we're not even against Israel. Syria wants to work with Israel. Even Israeli newspapers are saying, why are we on the side of the people trying to overthrow Syria and Israel? Because it's globalism, folks. It's a giant double cross against humanity. So here's the chilling clip of General Dunford. For Syria. What about the option of controlling the airspace so that that barrel bombs cannot be dropped? Well, all, all the options. Uh, they, what do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. Let's back to the point again. That's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Just like General Dempsey was the 
chairman a few four years ago, and they, and they went to Obama and Hillary, and they said, listen, if we go in there, Russia's got a deal to defend them, the Russian troops, this is a sovereign nation, they're going to fight us. And, and at that point, they said the military's not going to do this, and there was a stand down. There was a soft coup. We should get Dr. Pachenik on tomorrow to talk about this. It's so big. Now it's got to the point where they're, because they go, oh, barrel bombs, like babies out of incubators. You know, they've always got some red, you know, shirt to wave. Oh, my gosh. They're dropping big bombs on Al Qaeda. They're dropping big bombs on the Wahhabists. Oh, my gosh. Their country got invaded. They got attacked. They were working with the West. Syria was a good guy compared to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia attacked us on 9-11, folks. We attacked Iraq, their arch enemy, that was secular and sold Playboys on store shelves, and women didn't have to wear hijabs, and 60% of their college graduates were women. The government of Iraq had more women in it than any other government in the Middle East, next to Libya. And again, what you see is truly more progressive states that want to work with the West getting set up. Saddam was trained by the CIA. It's declassified. He was set up and told to attack Kuwait. Look it up. We've been attacking the guys that don't have the beards, the guys that play rock and roll music. I'm not saying that's the sign of freedom. I'm just pointing out for Saudi Arabia. This is the bait and switch. Let's play this clip one more time. For Syria. What about the option of controlling the airspace so that, that barrel bombs cannot be dropped? All, all the options. Uh, they, what do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. World War III. And then if you watch, which I've been watching hours of, the Russian Ministry of Defense briefings, and then they've got briefings of people in the field as generals that look like they're about to die, completely freaked out going, and they're moving in their forces and they're getting ready to attack us, and we're getting our weapons ready, and I just, we hope. And it's like doomsday, folks. I mean, these shots are like Russians with big, like, red globes behind them and, like, satellite tracking. And they're just sitting there like they're in a doomsday bunker. And the average American has no idea what's going on. No idea. So, yeah, the debate tomorrow is big. And I was really anticipating it. We're going to be covering it live. Infowars.com forward slash show for the free feed. An hour before live coverage, live unerupted uh, uh, debate, and then two hours of analysis after at least. With your phone calls and more, Infowars.com forward slash show and some of these same stations carrying it. But meanwhile, World War III, in their own words, is being prepared. Now, to be clear, I'm going to be going to bed very early tonight. I'm going to go home right after the show. 6 o'clock Central, I'm going to hang out with my family. And have a little dinner, and then at about 9 o'clock, I'm going to put on my little nightcap and climb into bed and get to bed by about 9.30. Because tomorrow, I'm going to be hosting four hours of the worldwide broadcast that's been around for 19 years. Uh, I've been on radio for 21, but 19 years syndicated, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then I am going to go in my office, and I'm going to take a nap for a couple hours, a force nap to recharge. Uh, not that I even need it, but I'm not as on if I don't. I'm going to go eat. I'm going to go take a nap for a couple hours. I'm going to take a shower. i got a shower in my office here. And then I'm going to get dressed and suited up and research for an hour or so. And I'm going to go for an hour with a roundtable discussion before the big debate tomorrow. And then I'm going to cover an hour and 90 minutes of it live. We're, we're carrying the feed. We've licensed it. We've gotten it. Uh, before, we just do fair use where one group's covering it and it's public and we're going to analyze the propaganda. No, I've actually gone out and licensed it. We're going to be uh, carrying it from two different feeds I've licensed it from. Uh, and then we are going to have two hours of live analysis after, plus all the different highlights. You're going to have the very best coverage. Folks always complain. They go, man, when I tune in to see a debate here, let's do it on radio, you guys talk over more than half of it. Because if it's exclusively CNN or Fox or ABC or whatever, it's their event. And then you ha we pioneered this four years ago, the last election. Now everybody does it from Glenn Beck to the Young Turks to, you know, Huffington Post, which I'm proud of the fact that we pioneered it. But I talked to lawyers, checked it out. If we're, we're talking over it, giving analysis, criticizing the media or, or, or agreeing with it, it doesn't matter. It's the same reason you can play clips of a movie or clips of commercials or clips of shows and analyze them. It's fair use because it's your free speech to analyze them. We're not doing that tomorrow. We're carrying the debate. I'll sit there probably with a sock in my mouth, uh, you know, during certain points, during applause or during breaks or during a dirty trick. I'm going to throw in quick little comments and give some analysis. 
But the real analysis is going to be with our crew, our reporters, our investigative journalists are going to be in live time analyzing what Hillary and Trump say and fact checking it and then posting articles and video blurbs to Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com and our other big sites in live time. So really proud of the crew and everything they're doing. Very, very thankful to the listeners and viewers out there for your support because what you've done, spreading the word, buying our products, supporting our sponsors has made all this possible you can see the huge effect that InfoWars is having. Speaking of that, before I get back to the news, uh, we have a lot of different specials that are about to end. And uh, we have Super Male and Super Female Vitality, 20% off. It's, co it's cold-pressed, compact herbs known to increase vitality in a healthful, energetic way. Libido, you name it. It's changed my life. Third-party review sites have close to 1,500 reviews, 1,470-plus reviews on third-party power reviews, which are big sticklers. And other review sites, nobody's got a 4.8. That's because nobody cold presses these, okay? Total game changer. I was looking from a distance. It's 4.5 right now. So InfoWarsLife.com, your purchase supports the broadcast. It makes it all possible. Uh, we also have methylcobalamin. We call it Secret 12, the highest quality organic absorbable vitamin B12 that you take under the tongue uh, every day. It tastes delicious as well. This is such a game changer. Natural energy, stamina, clarity. Vitamin B12 is magic. That's why so many medical doctors basically inject the same formula. But don't inject this. This is for under the tongue. Injectable is more absorbable. But normal pills and stuff, you barely absorb. The gut doesn't really absorb this. It's under the tongue, in the mouth. So this is as best as you're going to get without going to the doctor and getting injections. And I'll tell you, MD's got something even better. Okay? Just going to be honest with you. But this is as good as it gets without the injections. So Secret 12, 20% off, InfoWarsLife.com. Or call toll-free, 888-253-3139. But I really want to, before I get into more news, enlist the listeners to realize that it's not just the fact that we're going to be covering the debate live tomorrow. It's not just that we have more viewers than CNN now. I mean, that's that's conservative. They're a joke. The, their average show is like 200,000 viewers. Our average hour has about 2, 3 million listeners. It's that the real power is you taking action. And if you get the link to Infowars.com forward slash show, where the live debate will be held tomorrow night. We're going to have uh, a bunch of different video feeds of it. We're going to have our own video feed of it. Uh, we're going to have our live coverage of it. We're going to have a feed we're going to put out. It's a one-camera shot with our reporters there that is just one camera on the stage, no interruptions. So, so there's no complaints. You're going to have a feed with no Alex Jones. You're going to have a feed with Alex Jones. You're going to have another feed that is our crew breaking in. So that's tomorrow night, Infowars.com forward slash show. But the real situation is this. We've covered events before, like the 2012 election, where we had 3.8 million viewers in 24 hours just on these video streams, not on our 180-plus affiliates on AM and FM and then a bunch of TV stations as well. It's over 300 if you count all that. Not just shortwave or, the, or satellites. Just... On our streams, 3.8 million connections. Now, granted, some of that was the same folks coming back and reclicking, but whatever. That That is unbelievable. People can say, oh, well, whatever. I mean, you have videos every week that have four or five video, you know, million views apiece. You know, you've got tens of millions of views a week now. I mean, why are you saying it's a big deal to have 3.8 million? Because the average CNN show has 200,000. This is a testament to liberty and how popular it is. So I want tomorrow to break that 2012 record. I want to have 4 million people tune into our YouTube stream, our Facebook stream, our own stream. People say, why don't you just have your own stream? I don't know if it can handle it tomorrow. I don't know if my bank account can handle it. Do you understand what happens when 3, 4 million people tune into something? <laughs> Even when you have the cheapest bandwidth around, I mean, I'm going to get like $100,000, $200,000 bills. And that's why I'm saying, buy the products. Buy the Hillary for Prison t-shirt. It's, it's about to... Uh, uh, you know, be part of history. It's a limited edition. The third edition is about to end, and I've decided that's it. I'm going to move on to some new slogan. In fact, that's a new announcement I'll make tomorrow. Hillary for president, and everybody copies it, and it's viral everywhere, and one of the top search terms the last six months, great. We had our victory. We're going to move on. This is the last edition, version three. I've decided it's over. It might be Hillary for, you know, Mars, or, you know, Hillary for, you know, uh, 
Captain Kangaroo. I don't know, but this is about to end. Infowarsstore.com. If you want it, it's historic. That does have a 4.7 review. Let's see if my eyeballs are right. Let's blow that up. This is across the room. Yeah, 4.7 review. Whole bunch of reviews. That's just on the uh, third version. Infowarsstore.com. Infowarslife.com. On the back it says, legalize freedom. So that's a limited edition that is about to enter into history. Infowars.com on the right-hand shoulder. Now, I said I'd get into polls, race rioting. We've already covered them trying to start a military crisis as their October surprise. This is historic. When we come back, I'll get into all the latest polls, the latest race rioting. Fox News lies, says white cop killed Keith Lamont Scott in Charlotte, North Carolina. MSM pushes narrative that police may have planted gun on Keith Lamont. I mean, I've watched the video, folks. Cops are a lot of things, and there's some bad ones out there, but they're not actors with four cops, white and black, screaming, put a gun down. The guy's got a gun in multiple videos, and then now they say, oh, it's not visible in his wife's video from 50 yards away. I mean, give me a break. You think cops want to go shoot somebody, much less a black guy, and lose their career? You, no, no. The evidence shows they slow roll and actually don't serve the communities, and the crime rates and death rates have exploded. That's what's really killing black lives. But can you criticize the cops for that? And I'm not in some cop butt-kissing mode here. But outside sources are trying to bankrupt our country and cause a civil war. I stand against it. Period. It's a no-brainer. Mama didn't raise a fool. Let's play this clip, though, of the chairman joint chief saying, you want us to do a no-fly in Syria? It means war with Russia. Here it is. For Syria. What about the option of controlling the airspace so that, that barrel bombs cannot be dropped? All, all the options. Uh, they... What do you think of that option, sir? Uh, right now, Senator, for us to control all of the airspace in Syria would require us to go to war against Syria and Russia. That's a pretty fundamental decision that certainly I'm not going to make. Now, I don't want to say this guy's perfect, but the point is the, the generals have been holding this back. Usually they're the ones that want war. Until there were nuclear weapons, they get it's it's the it's the end of their existence. So they have to go to these rhino Republicans who are even worse than Obama, quite frankly, and say, "Listen, if we bomb the Russians, they'll attack us. It means World War Three. You understand?" And then the little fake conservatives go, "Oh, I do hear you now. Yeah, it means no more golf course, dumbass." What? Imagine Congress going, what? Democrats and Republicans, can't we just bomb the Russians that were invited into a sovereign country to fight Al Qaeda? And the chairman goes, well, I have to go to war with Russia. You want to do that? That's the level we've reached. That's how crazy this is. Meanwhile, we've got George Soros, this master criminal that has admittedly overthrown more than 30 countries. He's got arrest warrants out around the world. Who is financing with hundreds of millions of dollars with the Ford Foundation and others. That's not Ford vehicles, folks. Uh, I heard people say, we're going to boycott Ford. Ford's not part of that. The Ford family's not part of it. They're, the foundation their, their grandfather set up got hijacked by leftist lawyers. It funds open borders. It, 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 it's horrible. It wants to drive down wages. The opposite of what Ford wanted to do. And Ford had his own problems, but <laughs> the Ford Foundation isn't Henry Ford. Let's just be clear. And I've studied it. They're... Uh, they're funding race war because they want us fighting with each other while the big banks rob us. It's very simple. We've all got beefs with each other. There's some real issues there. But overall, the, the, the thing is contrived. It, it, it's artificial. It's admitted. We have George Soros' emails. But now MSNBC goes to a new low and claims that the black police officer with three other white cops called to a guy that was reportedly off his medication, we now learn, doing weird stuff, scaring people with a criminal record, had a gun in his hand. Well, it's not clear from one video. It's clear in some other videos, so MSNBC is saying, and the videos are up on Infowars.com if you're a listener and want to see it, that he made this up, that the cops just, that a black cop just wanted to kill a black guy so he could get sued and get indicted. <laughs> Let me explain. The average cop does not want to go out and kill anybody. Okay, use your brain, folks. Do you want to kill somebody? Can you imagine the trouble you get in, even when you're doing it in the right? That's why nobody wants this job. Quite frankly, I got problems with a lot of police. But, I mean, who wants the job, though? You've got to ask yourself, would you do it? Have you ever called a cop? Then it gets very hypocritical, doesn't it? It does. I'm, I'm just being real here. It's like, I'm not going to blame the TSA. I blame myself for letting Congress pass all this crap. I used to chew the TSA out all day, so I'm like, wait a minute. They didn't pass the law to do it. I need to go after people that did that. It, it's, it's not that what they're doing is okay. It's that we've got to go to the root of the situation, or we're idiots.
Let's play this clip. MSNBC pushes narrative that police may have planted gun on Keith Lamont. BC on the ground around Lamar Scott. We're going to go ahead and play this next section for you. We'll slow it down. We'll zoom in at a point and take a look. Yep. He better live. Looking at there, we have circled this item on the ground. And you see there, the item flicks out. There it is there. So there's one item on the ground. Let's go ahead and re-rack that if we can, guys. There's one item on the ground, and then you're going to see a flick of a second item that ends up being tossed on the ground. We are, at this point, simply not going to speculate about what those items may be. We have one more point of reference for you, Chris, and then I know there's going to be a lot here to talk about. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look here. Uh, the fifth clip of uh, an officer who, who leans over. Um, and what you're going to see, and again, this is that officer on the right with the red shirt, that black tactical No, black it comes jacket. from the guy, he the cop on, hit pause. He it clearly, back that up unless I'm wrong, it comes from the cop in the uniform throwing the gun away. L let's back that up. Uh, look, look, regardless, if the cops end up playing this, you know, fine, we'll expose it. But why would you do that? Unless it's part of some, I don't know, PR stage deal. But let's go to the next clip here. Here's where Mark Dice does a great job, one of our auxiliary reporters, breaking this down. Here it is. Now, countless liberal lunatics are claiming that police planted the gun on Keith Scott after footage has been released of the incident, which show police ordering him a dozen times to drop the gun. Let's have a look at this idiotic, insane claim where we can clearly see that what's put on the ground or dropped on the ground isn't a gun. It is a glove. The officer here is clearly putting a glove on, and as he pulls out his glove, you can see that one or two fall out of his pocket. Later on, he picks up the glove, and even if they were to think about planting a gun on him, they certainly wouldn't do it when there is a woman yelling and screaming at them 25 feet away where they know that they would be captured on video doing it. And even if a cop were to plant a gun on a suspect, getting another cop to go along with such an egregious crime would be almost impossible, let alone getting a half a dozen police officers to agree to committing the frame job. That's right. So I, I play devil's advocate saying, hey, is it a gun? Looks like it's coming from the left, the right. But then you look at slow-mo, it's a gloves coming out of his pocket, the black cop. Let's go to this report, though, on Glenn Beck. This is important. Extremely important, dealing with politics and where all this is going and what it means. Did you see it? It was historic. This Friday, Senator Ted Cruz came out and endorsed Donald J. Trump against Hillary Clinton. Why is this so important? Because it shows that the arrogant Republican and Democratic establishments that are joined at the hip have been failing on every single front. They've been failing to start a race war with all of George Soros' money. They've been failing to deceive the public about Hillary Clinton's incredible illnesses. They have been failing to cover up the fact that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton literally created ISIS as a proxy army to take over the Middle East, part of their Arab Spring program. Everything they're doing, everything they're touching is blowing up in their face. And you've got Ted Cruz, whose career is over. This guy's totally discredited. You talk about Benedict Arnold, the guy's a joke. But then we've got his counterpart, the Judas Iscariot of the so-called conservative movement, and that's Glenn Beck. He came out today and said, well, I can't believe that Ted Cruz did this, and I'm going to go to the mountains. I'm going to just go away now for a while because I'm so incredibly upset. What a drama queen. This is the guy that implied Ron Paul supporters eight years ago were violent out of the clear blue sky. This is the guy that goes on liberal media to play the part of a conservative and then apologize and say that we're wrong. This is the guy uh, that engages in all these incredible stunts and acts like he's some type of messianic leader. But I got to give it to Glenn Beck. He's less opportunistic than Ted Cruz because Cruz now knows that despite all the dirty tricks against uh, Trump, despite the fact that the Republican establishment didn't give him any money, despite the fact that the mainstream media blasted him with everything they've got, he's going to win the presidency. He's way ahead in polls across the board. So he's now panicking, trying to jump back to the side of the Patriots. And everybody should put basically a buoy or a marker on Ted Cruz to understand this guy is the slimiest of the slimy. 
Now over here, we've got Glenn Beck, whether he's been blackmailed or whatever it is, that like a kamikaze will not give up and goes on all these Democrat shows like Meet the Press and Face the Nation and you name it, NPR, and basically says it's better to vote for Hillary or for anybody else other than Donald Trump. Again, the arrogance of this person. Anyone with half a brain knows, including a lot of Democrats, that Hillary Clinton stole the nomination from Bernie Sanders and is a master criminal. So again, why is this historic? It is an absolute example of the arrogance of the power structure. From the Democrats to the Republicans to the big mega banks, from, from, from Goldman Sachs uh, to General Electric to Apple to Google to Facebook to all the censors to all these people. They think that they can sit there and dominate a populist movement in the United States when they can't even suppress one in the United Kingdom or Russia. The truth is nationalism and populism and people wanting to run their own lives is coming back. And the sleeping giant of Americana that was the wonder of the world is rising like a phoenix right now. The truth is Donald Trump is way ahead in every battleground state. He's way ahead across the nation, even in polls where they have more Democrats uh, sampled than Republicans. The truth is the power structure is in a total panic. And George Soros and the Ford Foundation and others have quadrupled down, giving hundreds of millions to Black Lives Matter and others to start race riots all across this country. But even that is blowing up in their face. History is happening. Trump is only one manifestation of the populist tsunami that is gaining steam at hurricane force around the world. But those of us that do promote liberty have to understand that this is a sacred honor and a great charge that we've been given. And that once Trump gets into office, we have to fight even harder to ensure that this republic is restored. And Infowars.com will continue to be on the front lines of this fight. I am so honored to be associated with other constitutionalists and conservatives and libertarians and patriots and nationalists of every race, color, and creed. I am so proud to be associated with the great folks at DrudgeReport.com and Matt Drudge and the great people at Breitbart.com under the leadership the last few years. It has done amazing things. And WorldNet Daily and Daily Caller and everyone else. Because none of us are perfect, but we're not out to get the American people. And we believe in prosperity. We believe in freedom. And we are brothers and sisters in arms in this fight. And when we're done taking America back, we're going to take the rest of the world back. In an initiative I launched 10 years ago, Operation 1776 Worldwide. Not American colonialism, not America taking over countries with our armies, but America taking over the world with our original ideas of renaissance, the enlightenment, and freedom. We're on the march. The empire's on the march. Will America awaken? Will we take back control of our republic from the globalists? There's only 43 days until the general election. This is the Info War. We'll be back with the second hour. We've got Leanne McAdoo. Now, I didn't grow up when I was a kid wanting to be a cop. I didn't grow up worshiping police. I grew up with family that uh, were pretty highly educated and a lot of them that had been in different areas of the world and seen things other people hadn't seen. They said, listen, government brings in the drugs. Police department works for the feds. Here's how the cow ate the cabbage. But America still, compared to other countries, is a great place to live. So I set out to try to reform the police and criticize the bad things they do. That's why I'm pretty much the perfect person to cover this because everybody knows I made four films and wrote books to cover in the police state. I'm not in some, you know, uh, you got Anglophiles that worship English and Francophiles that worship the French and Russophiles that worship the Russians and I guess Japophiles that love the Japanese. I just love freedom. And I see the attempt to put all the sins of government and all the corruption of our elite on the police and I'm like the average cop's getting like forty thousand dollars a year has the highest rates of suicide they're busting their ass they got a crap job and I'm not buying into this whole thing let me get the emails from Soros how they're planning a big civil war and the rest of it years after I told you it was a civil war not that I'm a rocket scientist I've seen divide and conquer before in history but man I gotta tell you MSNBC has reached a level that I don't even know how to respond at this point I mean I watched the footage, I tried to be realistic, and I noticed it came from the right to the left, 
and we blew the footage up, and clearly it's three gloves falling out of the guy's pocket. The black cop that shot the black guy. God, God rest his soul. Keith Lamont Scott. And then MSNBC, when I can figure it out, one of our contributors, Mark Dice, can figure it out. They know what's going on. They think their viewers are dumb. But on their video, they don't really show it slow. They say it's slowed down, but it's barely slowed down. You slow it down, it falls out of the cop's pocket. It's a damn glove. And I'm just like, man, how do you get that evil where you sit there and try to frame people? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, it's, it's not like it's some rogue cop framing somebody. That's bad enough. It's the giant media organization with thousands of employees doing this. It just illustrates who we're dealing with. So let's go to the clip of Mark Dice breaking down the frame up and then the actual frame up. Here it is. Now, countless liberal lunatics are claiming that police planted the gun on Keith Scott after footage has been released of the incident, which show police ordering him a dozen times to drop the gun. Let's have a look at this idiotic, insane claim where we can clearly see that what's put on the ground or dropped on the ground isn't a gun. It is a glove. The officer here is clearly putting a glove on, and as he pulls out his glove, you can see that one or two fall out of his pocket. Later on, he picks up the glove, and even if they were to think about planting a gun on him, they certainly wouldn't do it when there is a woman yelling and screaming at them 25 feet away where they know that they would be captured on video doing it. And even if a cop were to plant a gun on a suspect, getting another cop to go along with such an egregious crime would be almost impossible, let alone getting a half a dozen police officers to agree to committing the frame job. Mark Dice is always on fire. I love him. Uh, we already played the clip. If you missed it, you just tuned in. Infowars.com, MSNBC uh, pushes narrative that police may have planted a gun on Keith Lamont Scott. Our country is being taken over by multinationals. We're, we're having our whole future destroyed. Our jobs shipped overseas. We've got weirdo Nazi collaborator George Soros funding a race war, starting with attacking the police, which will only turn the police into a hit squad murder team. That which doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. We do not want to do this with the police. And Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign back in 2000 and again in 2015 when he first announced is our guest for the next 30 minutes. And Leanne McAdoo on this Sunday Live Edition will be in studio with her take on all this. Roger will be joining us tomorrow night. We're going to have coverage for an hour before. We've licensed the feed to carry the full debate for an hour and a half between Donald Trump and Hillary Rodham Clinton. And then two hours of phone calls and um, clips and fact-checking. So four-plus hours of analysis kicks off tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. So I'll do four hours tomorrow. Then I'm going to come and do four more hours because wild horses couldn't drag me away. And also tomorrow morning, uh, Roger doesn't know about this yet, but it, it ties into some news that's already here in front of us uh, from Breitbart. Uh, I want to get his take on a big breaking story we've got about Hillary and her warmongering and working with Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Islamic State. Uh, Breitbart's kind of got a smell of this early. Hillary Clinton sponsored Secret of Arid Spring program that destabilized the Middle East. So I'll get Roger's take on this once I can show him the article tomorrow. It'll be up at 5 a.m. Central Standard Time when Paul Watson, who just finished it today, posted. Uh, so much to cover, so much to break down. Uh, Roger, I've got a stack of polls here showing Trump continuing to surge, but then I've got mainstream articles about dead voters voting in Colorado where he's surging. We haven't talked in a few days, so I don't know what's front and center for you. Uh, the uh, the uh, you know master of the dark art of telling the truth. I'm a dark art. You're a you're a, you're a master of dark art. So I guess I'm your minion. What are we dealing with here, Dark Lord? Uh, we're conspiracy analysts, is what we are, as Gore Vidal used to say. Alex, uh, I'm in New York City, uh, kind of in the bunker, uh, bearing uh, some of the grassroots support for Donald Trump uh, at this debate. Uh, and I've got to tell you, I've been putting in long hours. Uh, if it was not for brain force, uh, I really, uh, it, which really has given me an enormous amount of clarity and energy. Now, you didn't pay me to say that. I didn't tell you I was going to say it. It's merely a fact.
Uh, so, well, thank uh, you. I saw you on the road at the RNC with big bottles of it. It is the best nootropic, the healthiest brain booster out there. So thanks for the plug, Roger Stone. Well, look, I, I've been into alternative medicine, Eastern-based medicine, for many years. The Chinese, even the Egyptians, knew more about the healing qualities of herbs and the uh, and the importance of vitamins. Uh, so uh, I know they try to make use it to make us sound like we're odd, but. They're the ones. Hey, uh, hang that albatross around our necks. We love it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I'm uh, feeling very confident going into this debate because uh, the Donald Trump that I have known for 40 years is an instinctual fighter. Instinct In fact, I was reading, he's not even doing pre, uh, the AP reports pre-debate. He is going to rise the occasion. There are some inside his camp who have tried to press him into these mock debates where somebody plays Hillary uh, and Donald would play himself. Now, Gerald Posner actually sent me an email offering to put on a size 16 pantsuit and play Hillary if Trump wanted him. That's not Trump's style. So you've been offered to play Hillary already? Uh, well, this gentleman volunteered, uh, the famous author of, uh, of the book, um, case closed, yes. bolster the Warren Commission, an attorney, a wily debater. Uh, he's wrong, of course, at least on that issue. But, Alex, I commend you his books on Saudi influence in the United States politics and the early dangers of al-Qaeda, uh, on which his books are on the money. Boy, Trump sure destroyed Hillary when he said it was a bombing in New York, and then it was a bombing in New York, and then for two, three days she said it wasn't a bombing, and then now we've got another Islamist uh, attack out in Seattle. It seems like the stars are lining up against Hillary. Well, I think she carries a lot of baggage into the debate. The point, of course, is that Trump is not going to do the formal kind of mock debating. Nobody's going to play him, not Gerald Posner, not Laura Ingram, not anybody. He is. Uh, he has his own way of preparing. So yes, people who ask me, is he prepared? Yes, in his own way. He's thinking. He's taking notes. Once in a while, he asks people questions. He doesn't tell you what he thinks of your answer. He's got a wide cross section of very smart friends. But at the end of the day, there's only one Trump advisor that matters. That's Donald Trump. No one can put words in his mouth. The idea of remembering a zinger, uh, he just doesn't work that way. Now, Roger Ailes, who is, to my mind, one of the smartest guys ever in television, and he was a longtime friend of Donald's, uh, who has no formal capacity uh, in the campaign, did, however, tell Donald uh, advice that he gave Ronald Reagan, the same advice I gave Ronald Reagan, the same advice I would give Mr. Trump, but I don't like to divulge our personal conversations, that he should be thematic, stick to the big picture. You don't need to know how many freighters are in our naval force or the name of every sub-chief of a tribe in Africa. You just need to stick to the general themes. You may remember when Reagan debated Mondale, and he was prepared for his debate by Dick Darman from Harvard, former Elliot Richardson Ray aide, and Jim Baker. They tried to cram Reagan's head with facts and figures and statistics. Nancy Reagan later said they brutalized her husband. It was the only debate in his long political career that he lost. So it is with Trump. He will win this debate his way. Well, obviously, he's somebody that nobody would want to debate on his feet if he's himself. What about Hillary, though? I mean, she can't be out in public more than 10, 15 minutes. She's been missing for a week. She's with weird blue screens behind her, coughing and choking on TV when she does show up for a few minutes. Her eyes are pointing different directions. I'm not being mean. She looks like a cancer patient. Uh, what is she going to do? I mean, I don't think, quite frankly, I don't think she can show up and do 90 minutes with no break. Well, uh, in negotiations, I can tell you it was Trump who insisted on standing. Her aides preferred being seated. It was Trump who insisted 90 minutes, no long bathroom breaks, 
no, uh, uh, no uh, commercial interruptions. So uh, it, it really, uh, Trump has gotten a format that I think is beneficial. That's my next question. This is a godsend. How did this happen? Everything's been rigged against him. How suddenly did the gods of manna open up the sky and he gets exactly what makes sense? Well, I wouldn't go quite that far. Uh, there is a woman on this uh, moderating uh, uh, list who uh, she doesn't have the first debate, but I believe she has the last. So they got some knives and daggers and things hidden. Obama attended this woman's wedding. Uh, she's a good friend of the Clinton. So I don't know who agreed to these set of moderators. I note that Donald Trump came out the other day and said no moderators. Lincoln versus Douglas. Exactly. The biggest debates of all time. But still, it's, still, it's a bigger challenge than that so-called, you know, uh, commander-in-chief debate a few weeks ago that was just 30 minutes with her, 30 minutes with him. And which, indisputably, she has some kind of earpiece. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. However, she just told the FBI recently that she can't remember anything. And she's got all. this black Secret Service agent jumping up saying, keep going, just act calm, everything's fine. Right. So, uh, you know, I've seen video of her falling off the back of the stage. I mean, this uh, she is uh, she's doing practice. Roger, we're about to go to break, but let me ask you this. In your gut... Do you think she shows up, and if she does, does she have a coughing fit, or does she collapse? Uh, all right, when we return. And again, we want to plug the websites. I carry both your books, the uh, the uh, uh, Clinton's War on Women, the Bush Crime Family, InfoWarsStore.com. Can Hillary Clinton, I mean this, because quite frankly, I want this to happen tomorrow night. I want Trump to destroy her. This is a serial criminal. I just can't wait to see it. But but I am absolutely questioning myself right now. You know, uh, will she show up? I don't think she can. I mean, she's been gone for a week. If she does, what are the bets? Coughing fit, 90%. Falling down, 30, 40%. I mean, having to hang on the podium. But, but will that be her victimhood? In the new America, will it be if she, like, craps her diapers, her adult diapers? Will that be read by the Democrats as the new tea leaves, the new portent to worship? Roger Stone from StoneColdTruth.com straight ahead. And the empire is corporate crony capitalists that are anti-free market, that work with different forms of authoritarianism. Our guest is going to be with us till 45 after. In the last segment, we're going to have purely to cover news with Leah McAdoo, but she's here riding shotgun with us right now through this segment and the next. Pop it anytime, Liam. We've got two more segments with Roger Stone. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., I'll be live on the air. And then we've got the coverage of the debate an hour before. I'm actually licensing the debate, so I'll be carrying it live for an hour and a half. And then two hours after, so I want to invite Roger, who's obviously a busy guy, uh, to pop in during or after the debate tomorrow. But, Roger, I mean, I, I'm on the edge of my seat at a level I've never been before. Obviously, you're the former head of the Trump campaign, his friend for a long time, been advising, doing a great job. But I see the power structure in total panic. Ted Cruz being forced to endorse. Uh, the neocons basically falling. The Republican establishment dying. Uh, we've got inside videos on InfoWars of Democratic Party leaders saying, we like Trump. The Democrats we know all like Trump. Talk about a landslide. I don't want to be overconfident here, but it looks like that, as I said earlier, the stars are aligned against Hillary Clinton. Roger Stone. Well, Alex, if you want evidence that Donald Trump is about to win, merely look at the endorsement of him by Ted Cruz. This guy is a weasel who knifed Donald Trump in the back at the Republican National Convention, Nelson Rockefeller style. But now he's, just, he's figured out that there is an avalanche coming. There's a tidal wave of reform coming as angry Americans... Uh, storm the polls. There is, in fact, I think, a small but significant hidden vote in that it is not socially cool to be for Donald Trump. Uh, on the other hand, anyone who's seen Hillary attempt to dance should realize that this is the least cool candidate of all time. So the Republican establishment is panicking. They're on the wrong side of history. How do they counter strike? What do they do now? Well, I think they're kind of running out of options. Trump's uh, gains most recently in the polls, Alex, were largely Republicans coming home, meaning they are deserting their neocon leaders because the Republican establishment always pretends to be conservative. Exactly. I shot a video yesterday that's gone viral that I say Ted Cruz endorse of Trump 
marks the end of Glenn Beck and the Republican establishment? Well, uh, in essence, yes. Uh, it is. He's obviously trying to uh, save his political career. By the way, I am hopeful that former Governor Rick Perry will choose to challenge the globalist Bush boy, uh, uh, Ted Cruz, who's, as you know, Alex, his campaign underwritten secretly by Wall Street, enormous, suspicious loans that he never reported. Exactly. Let's be clear. We, we're not mad at him in a pissing contest because he tried to defeat Trump. It's that he's a Judas Iscariot, a Benedict Arnold. He was always a fake. We know he'll turn against us in the future. That's why Cruz and Beck must be basically marked out here. Yes. Uh, I mean, Ted Cruz is a Quislet. His wife is in the Council on Foreign Relations. I rest my case. Let's move on. Exactly. So Goldman Sachs. But it, but it shows a collapse in confidence for Hillary. So, so what comes next? Well, uh, as I have discussed, there are a number of options available to them. The most obvious ones is one is to steal this election. Uh, now, uh, the Democrats try to dismiss this and they try to distract us into believing that voter fraud is the only issue and that that is not existing. Well, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. It's widely uh, practiced in the Democratic machines. Fox News the other night had an excellent series on people who voted in two states in the same year. So uh, it most certainly exists. Uh, but I'm more concerned, as you know, with vote rigging. Look what Trump has said. These elections are rigged. We have established uh, by a Stanford study that shows it was done to Bernie Sanders that these machines are easily rigged for a desired result. So that's the big problem. And, and and we see Hillary in these weird, where she's actually like a whole new person babbling, saying, why ain't I going to win 50 point? She <laughs> seems to be melting down. So I, I guess she's betting everything on election fraud. Well, uh, it, again, 45 days is an eternity in politics. Then we certainly know the trajectory of this race. Trump is gaining now two points down in Pennsylvania. Extraordinary. This is their stronghold. The Philadelphia machine, of course, is famous for election fraud and non-existent and dead voters. Here's a trivia question for you, Alex. What state has more dead people on the state voter rolls than any other? Why, it's the Keystone State. This is Armageddon. The reason Trump is gaining here is because he has an appeal in western Pennsylvania that no Republican has ever had before. That's right. They say he's either ahead or in a dead heat or three points behind in Pennsylvania in a bunch of different polls. What does that mean? Well, uh, essentially, uh, there are white, patriotic, God-fearing, tax-paying Democrats who are most likely union members in western Pennsylvania. It is a stronghold for the unions. And these Americans are rejecting Hillary. They voted for Obama. They voted for Hillary's husband. But they are not. They are now voting for Donald Trump. This, in a way, offsets the huge loss he's going to get in the city of Philadelphia. He's going to come out of there 750,000 votes down, perhaps more. The machine does its job. The counties around Philadelphia once reliably Republican, are now really purple. They're well, well, what about the Google poll they admittedly did where she was 20-something points ahead, now she's only five points ahead. That's what really panicked her. And two days after that, she went to D.C. to give a speech. I mean, if she can't win D.C., my God. Yeah, uh, look, uh, she's Trump now ahead in Ohio. Despite the fact that the Kasich machine and the state Republicans are doing everything humanly possible to undermine the campaign. Sure, so what about the chairman of the Joint Chiefs saying in Congress yesterday, or, two, or Friday, two days ago, he's been ordered to attack Russia, and he doesn't think it's a good idea. I mean, he's been ordered by Obama to start World War III. I played the clip earlier. I mean, I can't believe I'm reading these headlines. This is, I played the clip. I mean, it seems like, what will they pull? A war? A economic collapse? A race war? No, wait a minute. Hold on. Isn't it Trump who's in bed with, with the Russians? This, uh, this uh, line of attack needs to be addressed. Dianne Feinstein, a tired old Democratic hat who's been in the Senate a long time and whose husband has made millions in sweetheart federal questionable deals, is calling for an investigation 
into Trump's uh, business affairs in Russia or with Russians, of which he has none. Big headline. Sure, but meanwhile, Obama is ordering an attack on Russian forces. This is mainstream news. Yeah, I mean, it, it just shows you how craven and disingenuous it is. They, yeah, they can't win an election. Here's they're going to start World War III. Arrest these people. I think that they will do just about anything they can get away so with. So that's my question. We're going to break, coming back with you in closing. What are they going to pull? Roger Stone, the, you know, the consummate political insider, not the insider like he's an establishment, but the guy that knows what's going on. Roger always gives us what he really thinks. You know, for over a year, he's saying Trump's behind. Oh, my God, I'm so worried. Now he says Trump's way ahead, which is clearly he is. What do they pull? I mean, they're trying to start wars, economic collapse, race riots, George Soros, hundreds of millions to start race riots. What happens? Roger Stone will ask you with Leanne McAdoo straight ahead on Alex Jones. All right, Leanne McAdoo is here, one of our great reporters. She'll be co-hosting with myself tomorrow night during the pre-debate, debate, and after debate. Roger Stone, former head of the Trump campaign, confidant, will be joining us uh, in the post-debate after 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. Uh, but Leanne, it's funny. You were wanting to bring up a subject when you called me yesterday and said, hey, I want to come on the show Sunday, which you're always welcome to do. I always say, hey, come on when you want to come on. You wanted to bring up Jennifer Flowers and the genius of Trump coming out and saying, oh, you want to bring Mark Cuban to put in the front stage? I'll bring somebody that he settled a sex case with, Jennifer Flowers. So mm -hmm. it's funny, then Stone during the break wants to bring this up, so you're on the same page. Right. You go ahead and lead this interview with Roger Stone. Right, and, and now even, of course, as the, the media coming out today saying, well, now the Trump camp is backpedaling, they're not going to have Jennifer Flowers, she's not there. He, he tweeted, perhaps I'll have her in the front row. She says she wants to come. She said right away, she's like, I'll be there. I'm, I would love to be your VIP guest. Better but look at the Mark Cuban. What I thought was so genius about it, and this is just the genius of how Trump can control the media and control the narrative, is even if she never does show up to become his guest, it forced the media to have to report on just who Jennifer Flowers is because there's so many young people under 30 who have no idea who Jennifer Flowers is. They don't believe uh, all the stories about Bill Clinton or, you know, what what people have been bringing up. So and they're one of the largest voting blocks now. They don't so, know about what a predator this guy is exactly. or I stole the Haitian money. Roger Stone. Yeah, uh, this is exactly right. First of all, uh, the prelude to a debate is somewhat like the prelude to a prize fight. You're supposed to psych out and taunt your opponent. This is the genius of Trump. He didn't say he was inviting her. He said perhaps he was inviting her. Now, the Clinton campaign said they were inviting Mark Cuban, a man who made all of his money in a Federal Reserve created boom in which most Americans lost billions. So I imagine that Mr. Cuban wants Hillary's loose Fed policies so he can continue to be a pirate. He sold his company to Yahoo for a year. Sure, how pathetic is he wanting to join the campaign to be a VP a year ago, now butthurt? I mean, is he really just lusting after Donald Trump? Is this kind of a latent gay worship thing? Uh, look, uh, he and Trump have, had a, have not been close friends, but he went from mildly kind of saying, well, you got to give the guy credit to now being the attack dog. So he's a spurned, he, he's a spurned latent, and there's nothing wrong being gay. He's well, just... yeah, because didn't Mark Cuban open up his stadium to him at the last minute for his huge crowds that Trump had in the last minute? So Cuban's got a crush on him and a spurned. Well, it's worse than that. This poor bastard goes out and defends the Clinton Foundation. They push him out to say, oh, no, it's a great charity. It was like that jackass uh, James Carville. People will die if they go out of business. No, people have already died because they're in business. Uh, Black Lives Matter, unless you live in Haiti, unless you live in Libya, or any place else that the Clintons wish to. Where they, where they, where they only gave 5.7% of the money they gave. Right, uh, they only wanted to get in there because they wanted to steal the resources. Uh, and absolutely. Now, what's interesting here, and I can, I can tell you this, is, is that immediately after Trump posted this, uh, Dolly Kyle contacted me. Uh, someone who had spoken to Juanita Broderick contacted me. Uh, so a Paula Jones representative uh, uh, contacted me. And they were all willing to come to the debate or do anything else to let people know, on behalf of Donald Trump, the way Hillary Clinton has led the attack on women.
Bill Clinton is a sexual predator who has abused women. This is about violence against women. Hillary has covered it up, and therefore she is complicit in it. And these women are all more credible than Hillary Clinton. Right. Now, you know what I'm curious about, Mr. Stone? What do you think about the fact that Fox News had an article up yesterday talking about Bill Clinton being on uh, Epstein's plane? And they actually released the, the plane log there showing how many times Bill Clinton... What, the pedo plane? Yes. Uh, off the, to Orgy the admitted Island, child rape plane? Off to Orgy Island. Like, how... Yeah, why is Clinton on the pedophile plane? Now, all of a sudden, they're reporting on it. First of all, uh, with all due respect to the New York Times, Nick Bryant broke the story for Gawker. He had it all. There's not a morsel of news in the Times story today that doesn't tell us what Brian or your poll. He is uh, not a conservative, not a Republican, and one of the greatest investigative reporters living today. No, you're right. Gawker did break it. Uh, so, uh, and uh, Mr. Epstein gave money to the Clinton Foundation. It has not only never been returned, but it mysteriously disappeared from their voluntary website. So, oh. you know, and we, we know that Clinton visited the hedonistic orgy island uh, that Epstein... So what does this mean? He's blackmailed? He's compromised? Well, it's very hard to say. The rumor has always been that Epstein, a billionaire hedge fund manager, financial genius, uh, had video of Bill. Anything is possible in this murky world. Yeah. We do know that he was given a slap on the wrist uh, by yeah. both... Democrats in Florida and the Republicans in Washington. All right, Stone, let me ask you this, because you're going to be on with us tomorrow night. Uh, StoneColdTruth.com, carry both your books, InfoWarsStore.com, and your Bill Clinton rape shirt. So important to wear that. Expose what's happening. What else is on your radar? What else are you looking for? What else are you concerned about? Then Leanne, jump in with, with, with what else you're concerned about. Well, well uh, you have the entire question of, uh, of the... Uh, decree consent that the Republicans foolishly signed in 1982, which essentially prevents many of the stop the steal activities that we have been looking at, uh, potentially uh, leading the way to an enormous legal battle. If the polls are unattended, if only the watchers for the federal government and the watchers for the Democratic Party are watching the polls. And how naked is that? First we bring it up, Trump brings it up, it doesn't exist. Now, oh, we got to have the UN come in and the Justice Department run everything, and that's pretty clear. What a joke. Yes, I think that's, uh, it, it is uh, one of the dangers. I have said many times on this show, and I repeat it, that I fear for Trump's physical safety. Uh, it's not something I want to belabor, but uh, it, it is, uh, he is leading a revolution, and he is Sure, so election fraud, Trump assassination, uh, big war, October surprise. What about a fake attempted assassination on Hitler? Uh, you know, I, that, I, look, the globalists are, will, are, will do anything. They killed John Kennedy. They infiltrated the Watergate burglar teams to botch the mission and bring Nixon down. They, they uh, lied about health care. They have lied about war in Libya. So the sky's the limit. The next 40-something right. days is an epic time to be alive. Uh, Muammar Gaddafi had gr agreed to abdicate and had given, uh, in three different negotiations, everything Hillary State Department wanted. Everything. We still spent a billion dollars bombing that country, killing black people, and deposing a guy who was sharing his intelligence with us. Who had renounced well said, well said. You're back with us tomorrow after the debate at 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central. Lee, and final comment. We're going to come back with you after uh, Roger Stone leaves us, but final question for, for him. Well, we see they're already planning World War III behind the scenes. This might be the October surprise that we're all going to get nuked before anyone gets into office. Trump's already said he is running on diplomacy, not destruction. Meanwhile, we know Hillary Clinton's just going to get in there, and if she gets in, she's going to take out another player on the So are you saying Trump. what is the October surprise? or what? Yeah, I mean, it's like, what is Trump's plan? Roger, what is the October surprise, or, or how will Trump counter this? Uh, if I reveal... Uh, you know, surprises that could come in October, I would be telegraphing punches. Uh, this is going to be a very close, very hard-fought 
campaign. Well, you got the, some gigantic juicies that you promised to at least <laughs> in near time. Give us one of the explosives, others explosives. But we're going to have some explosives right here, right, Little sweetie? Giblets. Well, I think that's a high uh, probability. There's a lot uh, to play out yet. The WikiLeaks are going to be significant. The debates are going to be significant. It's one hell of a time to be alive, and oh, if you go to thestonecoldtruth.com, you'll find it all. Roger Stone will talk to you tomorrow night, 10.30 Eastern, 9.30 Central, during the post-debate coverage. Thank you, sir. Good to be here. Yeah, good to be here. This is a hell of a time to be alive at InfoWars.com. Can't believe it. We are the tip of the spear. That ain't hot. We are it, baby. Stay with us. Leanne's coming up. All right, Leanne, we got 10 minutes left. We didn't take calls today. We will tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., the weekday show. Huge coverage, 7 o'clock Central, past 10 o'clock of the live debate. Huge tomorrow, InfoWars.com forward slash show. Get your friends and family and neighbors with that link to tune in, InfoWars.com forward slash show. This is a battle against mainstream media. It's a battle for hearts and minds. It's an info war. Leanne, take over. I am really excited about tomorrow night's coverage. I know I'm just going to be one of the millions, tens of millions of people out there that are watching this debate and cannot wait. With bated breath, we're all sitting in, of course, when the, the announcement that Trump said, perhaps I'll bring Jennifer Flowers in and have her sit on the front row. I just was like, oh, my gosh. Grab the popcorn. It just got real <laughs> ringside seats to the show. To it the just show. got gangster. Yeah. I mean, Trump does not care. But, you know, they would really don't have enough room in the audience for all of the women who are Bill Clinton's alleged sexual the whole sports stadium. victims. So, yeah. But but truly, it was it was interesting being able to talk to young people. There was a young girl uh, I was out and uh, trying to explain to her who this woman was, and she had no idea. And that's what's so key about how Trump could play the media like that and force them to have to talk about who Jennifer Flowers was. It's like Back to the Future. Young people are the, a massive voting block now, and they have no idea about who the Clintons really are. So I think that was pretty awesome. But one thing that you know concerns me is regardless of who wins this election, we have wars on all fronts right now not only world war three uh as the pentagon is demanding a no-fly zone for russia over syria which you sent me the video yesterday with general dunford basically saying i'm not gonna call for a no-fly he zone. said this means war with russia this means we're going to war with not only russia but also syria and not only that but wasn't it the u.s that was making those accidental air accidental Bombing. airstrikes so why are they the only ones that are allowed to fly so they can take out... Our own generals don't want to do this, but it's our own elite that are doing it. They're right. disconnected. What does your gut tell you? I can't believe if she can't show up for 20 minutes of a speech for months. How is she going to debate Donald Trump commercial-free for 90 minutes? I mean, I don't want to be proven wrong, but my gut tells me she can't show, or maybe she can. I mean, what's going to happen? Okay, well, let's not put it past the the rich and super powerful, the type of life extension technology they're going to be pumping into this woman. Baby tomorrow. blood transfusions. Totally. Like, she's taking the last six days you know, off. sacrifice 19 gonna, babies tomorrow. sacrifice. Yeah, like, she's going to be... Or being sarcastic. Wink, wink. Leanne Magadou says she's drank 18 babies' blood. It's <laughs> 17. It sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> But no, seriously, I mean, you saw the last time that she had to make her stand and she was there uh, talking to the veterans and she just was like, her eyes were like bulging out of they her head. They got some special drugs. Absolutely. And it only need, she only needs to stand up on her own for 90 minutes, you know, talk her through. It's like when you're doing spin class or something. You know, as General Flynn said, you see how mad she got? This cannot be our commander in chief. Yeah. Well, and you know what? That's what they're saying is going to be her strategy tomorrow in the debate because neither one of them can really afford to lob bombs at the other one because, you know, they're trying to get people to start Look liking Look how reasonable. Them. Yeah. They're, they're trying to get their, their poll numbers up, their likability up. Up. So the, if they continue to lob these bombs at each other, that's not really a very smart strategy, especially for Clinton, because Trump just seems to absorb everything that's thrown his way. And then it just makes him more powerful, like the whole Pepe debacle. <laughs> People just I didn't know that. that frogs were racist. But <laughs> well, I did see one at the park the other day. I was yeah, like, oh, racist frog. And I racist ribbiting. But uh, I think that what Hillary Clinton is going to try and do is lob these bombs at Trump to throw him off his game because he's. I think he's going to go in there and try to, you know, appear presidential. And she's going to try to piss him off. She's going to try and throw him off and make him react in some way so that she can then for the next week with the news, they can say he's unfit to be president. He that's not presidential at all. Oh, my goodness. 
It, it, just like they were when he said something about Jennifer Flowers. They were like, have some class. Oh no, I agree, gosh. but I mean, at your gut level, no one knows. Special drugs, resting a week. Does she arrogantly try to make it? Because she gave a speech Monday and was like 10 minutes. It was like, Arr! she was coughing and she went off stage. And then her eyes are pointing different directions with these green screens, <laughs> these short things she does. I mean, how does she go up against Trump for 90 minutes? I don't see her showing up, Leanne. I don't know. I think you know, we don't just say she's sick and the Secret Service told us she has convulsions every 15 minutes right. unless she's on a bunch of drugs. And then she's so drugged up, she looks like she's, you know, Mr. Sleepy Elf. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. It's like people, people forget that before she even admitted to having pneumonia, she was taking days off from the campaign trail. She was already taking days of rest. It's not just all of a sudden. So what's your oh. gut tell you? Does she show up? I think she's arrogant. I think she shows up I and think then she, oh has coughing God. fits. Remember she, one debate she had 10 minutes in the bathroom? I know. She get, she couldn't come back on time. What if Trump lovingly changed her diaper? <laughs> I hate to make predictions like that, but I've got to tell you, I kind of got a little excited last week and like some goosebumps because I was like, man, she's going to cough. The way they've I had a dream up. over a month ago where she was in a debate with Trump and falls over during it and like hits her head. But, but Trump says something mean and she doesn't, so it's his fault. Oh, of course. So she wins the election. How dare he attack her and throw those accusations that she cause her to faint. But that's the thing is like with everything that's propping this woman up, all of the media outlets out there, all the newspapers, all of the establishment, every single thing that she's got working for her, it's her health and her dark heart. <laughs> what do you think's going on with her though? Because she does look progressively worse. And I actually, as a fellow human, feel sorry for the, at least that body. You know, I have empathy. I mean, I don't like her seeing yeah, her. Yeah, it's not nice. What do you think's going on with her? Well, she should just be. You know, now she's your sweet little grandma. Honestly, Alex, I think people, you embody that cancer. You can only hide it for so long or treat yourself with these life extension technologies for so long. But if you're truly an evil person and you're bad continuously for decades lying to people that starts to fester inside of your body like a cancer so hillary's cancer has come home whether it's spiritual or physical i agree that's what i think that's truly well, I, mean, I mean i'm kind of saying what you're saying so yeah what does your gut tell you because it's i mean for me i keep saying emblematic but it really is a symbol of the corrupt disconnected elite that they think they could run hillary who was having brain surgery reportedly four years ago i mean mm -hmm. well, why do they think we're so stupid well that's what matt drudge said is that they think the american people are so stupid that they could literally have hillary clinton's brain in a jar lo and behold a year later <laughs> it might just be hillary clinton's brain in a jar that's up there debating trump i might vote for your brain in a jar <laughs> But not Hillary's. Oh, man. But can you imagine? Her body's not going to make it. That's And that's the thing. It's like you got to read that fine print when you make those deals with the devil. You know? Well, Hillary is somebody that always smacks her lips about death. And she goes out of her way to kill Christians and others. Yeah. I mean, when you get in the whole spirit world, she's a very wicked person. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. And that's the thing that's so frightening about it is that with this propping up whoever gets in, they're going to have to be dealing with the whole mess. So we got Syria, the World War III that they're working on. And then we have here in our own country, civil unrest. I mean, look at the state of the country that we're in and how they've had to, in order to make it not a class war, because all the elite are, you know, getting all their bunkers and stuff ready. They don't want the class war just yet. So they have to have the race war to continue propping up this failed system for a little while longer. That's right. Race war is before the class war. Because we don't want all the like rich rappers and stuff getting you know looted. It, 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 it's so sad because I don't want to fight anybody. I don't want to be racist. I don't want to be brace based. But it's so naked when a black cop's pulling gloves out of his pocket. They say he's dropping guns on some guy. Right. Or or to how programmed your mind has to be that your brother gets shot by a black police officer. And yet you look at the camera and you say, white cops are the devil. White people are the devil. And it's like, dude, your brother was killed by a black cop. What is, you're that programmed that it's still white people's fault? Like, no. we're just, it's just so racially charged. Leanne, I'm excited. You'll be here with us tomorrow, kicking off at 7 o'clock Central. With an hour of live coverage before, we'll have the debate with limited comment. We're going to just stream it. Infowars.com forward slash show. Listeners, viewers, spread that link. Defeat the mainstream media. We need the biggest audience out there. We probably will. It's going to be huge. And then we're going to continue on after with live analysis. And it, it, it's going to be huge. Cross your fingers, though. Does Hillary show up? Is she arrogant enough? I say 50-50. Leanne, what do you say? I say she's going to show up. But I, I agree. I think she's going to have a coughing fit. I think she's arrogant enough. I think she's going to show up.
And uh, on drugs, though. She's going to be whacked out. <laughs> She's going to be whacked out. So they were like, why ain't I 50 point ahead? She's going to be like, I'm ready to debate. <laughs> Who got these TVs, bitch? Tell me that. <laughs> I mean, she is just like, you know. Why yeah. am I 50 points? <laughs> why ain't I 50 points? <laughs> All right, Leanne, great job. Great job to the crew. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central, kickoff of the four-hour transmission, the big transmission, 7 o'clock Central, spread the word. It's the final countdown.